What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna to be doing a, uh, a pistol review on the awesome PPQ M2. Uh, it is an awesome pistol. There are some drawbacks to it, however, which we're gonna go over. But as usual, we're gonna go through kind of the uh, checklist of what I think is most important about a pistol, tell you what I think about it, why I bought it, what I would use it for, uh, compare it to some of the most popular competitors, and give you my overall opinion of it at the end. So let's start this off by opening up this box here and taking a look. I did an unboxing of this pistol already, so I'll show it to you real quick in case you missed that video. Uh, what comes with it is uh, two magazines, uh, ammo loader, back straps, regular stuff, and a pretty standard sized box for this type of pistol. Let's take it out here, and as you can see, that I made it ugly, but we'll talk about why here in a minute. This is the uh, PPQ M2. Uh, right off the bat here, one of the main differences between this and the original PPQ is the magazine release. This is a semi-automatic, in my opinion, compact frame, but I guess you could say it's, it's, a, it's somewhere in the area of full size to compact. It's a little bit bigger than the Glock 19, but a little bit smaller than the uh, Glock 17 show you a little quick size comparison there real quick as you can see this is a Glock 17 Let's see if I can get it framed there so as you can see it's a little bit smaller than the Glock 17 uh, the grip a little bit shorter as well pop out the G19 here I know not everybody runs Glocks but it's kind of the standard measurement and as you can see there a little bit bigger than the Glock 19 as well uh, a little bit thicker as well as you can see there This pistol holds 15 plus 1 rounds of 9mm. As I said before, it has an American style mag release. Uh, the previous version had the uh, ambidextrous mag release, which I've heard lots of good things about. I personally don't like, and that's because I am used to the American style mag release. And I shoot so many pistols that I like to have similar features on all of them, honestly, so I can keep track so I don't have those training scar, training issue kind of things. But if you were to buy just one pistol and you like that release, go ahead and get it. There's nothing wrong with it. As a matter of fact, there's actually some pros to it. One being that if you're a left-handed shooter, you don't have to hit that with your middle finger or your index finger or anything like that. You can just hit it with your thumb like a normal person. Uh, the VP9 has that style mag release as well, and I did complain about it in that review. But again, total personal preference. This pistol comes with two magazines. Uh, the magazines are worth around $35 a piece. I would recommend getting more, especially if this is gonna be your primary pistol. Uh, I would recommend getting maybe five-ish, maybe even six, seven, upwards of 10, depending on how many you really wanna shoot. But magazines aren't designed to last forever, guys, remember? So get a couple of magazines at the very least. One of the uh, most amazing things about this pistol right off the bat is I guess the price range that it's in is pretty good. Uh, at least for me, I got this pistol, I think I got it at Shields, my local gun store, for right around $510, which is pretty impressive. Uh, I know in Gun Broker, they go around somewhere between five and 600 bucks. Uh, there's a couple different variations of this pistol. This is the four inch barreled version. There's a five inch barreled version, which looks awesome as well. And there is a match version, which has some slide relief cuts, uh, different uh, paint job, uh, silver and uh, black bluish kind of, if my memory serves me correctly. It also has an RMR cut. Uh, I may get that version in the future. That looks pretty exciting to me. The uh, weight on this pistol is 24.5 ounces. Uh, that's pretty standard. It's right there in the middle. The uh, Glock uh, 19 is around 21. The SIG uh, P320 Compact is around 26. M&P right around 24. So it's you know right in the middle or on the lower end of its competition. The width is 1.3, height is 5.3 inches, and it has a black tenifer finish. I don't know much about the finish, but in my testing, I don't see any uh, holster wear or anything like that. 
So it handled itself pretty well in my opinion. The intended use for this gun. Well, as I said before, it's kind of right in the middle between a subcompact and a full-size pistol. And there's a lot of applications for a pistol that size. Uh, it's a little bit big to carry, but I would consider it the biggest gun that I would carry. Uh, I've been known to carry a Glock 17 in the past, but I don't like to. I kind of done it just for videos, things like that. But for my personal, my personal carry, this would probably be the biggest gun I would carry. Uh, Home defense is a definite. I would easily slap this X, the Surefire X300 on there and uh, use it for home defense. I wouldn't think twice about that. Uh, truck gun, if you could afford to uh, throw one of these in the elements and let her have it, go right ahead. Competition gun, I honestly think you're going to see a lot more of these on the competition circuit in the future. Uh, I've shot some USPSA matches, some IDPA, and I can tell you that I haven't, I don't think I've seen one Walter around here. Maybe I'm not paying attention. I've seen some uh, 226s, a lot of Glocks, a lot of MVPs, uh, a lot of CZ Shadows, uh, P09, things like that, but I've never seen a Walter. And the way I shot this pistol, I was really impressed with how it handled itself. I think it would be a great addition. The, maybe not the 4 inch, but definitely the 5 inch or even the match if you want to use a compensator and, a, and an RMR. Uh, I don't know how, how that would do as an open gun, but I'm sure you would do just fine. Uh, another application I would give this gun for is kind of a show off to your friend's gun. Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit more about that later in the video. Uh, the best application for this pistol, I guess, would just be an all-around pistol. I've talked about this before with guns like the uh, Glock 19 or even the M&P, uh, Sig 320, uh, Canik uh, TP9, uh, something that you have a light, uh, polymer-framed, reliable, mid-sized 9mm is a great option for a WROL, like without rule of law, or a uh, shit hit the fan scenario, something like a, uh, it doesn't have to be like the end of the world, guys. It could be something like a Katrina event, those things happen. If you live in a wooded area, you could carry this on you all the time, not have any problems. It would be great at that. One of the reasons it would be amazing at that is the reliability. I had one malfunction in this pistol, and I actually shot this pistol a lot more than I normally do in testing, simply because Man, I mean, I'm not going to hide it. I love this pistol. I had some experience on one in the past, chose to buy a couple more Glocks instead. I think that was a mistake. Uh, honestly, I really like this pistol, and it's probably one of the most underrated pistols that I've ever seen. Uh, the reliability was fantastic. However, the one min the one malfunction that I did have was a pretty major one, however. I had to run the uh, rear sight off a uh, steel target to open up the slide. I couldn't open it up myself. My pansy hands here couldn't uh, rip it out. And when I opened it up, it was a live, uh, unfired round. The, the uh, firing pin didn't even hit the primer. Not really sure what went on there, but I have to assume it was ammo related considering the other at least 800 to 1,000 rounds I fired out of this pistol it was 100% reliable. I can't stress that enough either because I don't shoot on an indoor range. Uh, I shot this pistol even recently, I think it was 15 below outside. Uh, I live in Iowa, so the weather changes periodically. Uh, it was 15 below one day, 50 degrees the next day, it rained one day we shot this. Like, we shot this in a lot of different conditions, and it performed flawlessly. Uh, same can't be said for the uh, Canic Elite, which I shot at the exact same time. I basically shot this right after this. Uh, on that 20 degree below zero day with the exact same ammunition, uh, Winchester and Freedom Munitions, and this performed perfectly. The Canic did not. Uh, durability, I would give it an A minus. Uh, the pistol handed, handled great, but this, uh, this polymer rail here did get beat up by the uh, Surefire XC1. I put several different weapon lights on this pistol, and as you can see, there's a bunch of uh, teeth marks out of it from the lights, but I think that's just standard with most polymer rails. Track record is excellent. Uh, accuracy, wow. Probably the most accurate uh, polymer pistol I've ever fired. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the most accurate pistol I've ever fired because I do have a couple that are more accurate like the uh, CZ AccuShadow or this uh, 1911 here. Uh, basically, this is how I grade pistols. I'm not one of those guys that put it on a bench or sandbags and shoot it. I'm talking about practical accuracy. and. Uh, I don't believe I've ever fired a pistol that couldn't outshoot me 
it's just really about how well I can shoot the pistol and this pistol has an excellent trigger and pretty good sights so it makes, accu it makes accuracy really easy to achieve. Honestly though, I'm not that great of a shooter. I'm all right. I could say that I'm decent enough to test these guns for you guys, but I'm not, you know, I'm not Jerry Mitchell. -like. I'm not gonna hit a target at a thousand yards with a nine millimeter pistol. However, I could relatively easily hit at 75 yards or even hundred yards with this pistol and I could hit at 50 yards every single time, which is extremely impressive all due to that trigger. That is one of the main reasons why I want to get the match version of the pistol because it'll have a longer barrel and I'll be able to use that RMR one point of aim and I want to really stretch this pistol out and see how far I can actually shoot it. Uh, the recoil is kind of a downside with this four inch pistol. Uh, less barrel length, more snappy, that's just how physics work. But it is a little snappier. A lighter, shorter pistol is going to be more snappy than something like a, uh, again, I just have it here, the 1911 for example, which is a steel framed five inch pistol. Uh, the ergonomics are great. Uh, I think they're really, really well for people with smaller hands. I said that about the VP9 too. I have really big hands as you can see there. Uh, I'm 6'3", 6'3 and a half, somewhere in there. So I got pretty big hands. With the biggest uh, back strap, it still handled just fine. Uh, I did feel like it had a little, I feel like it needed more texture, so I threw these incredibly ugly homemade sandpaper grips on. I cut these out of a roll of skateboard tape that I got on eBay for like six bucks. When I don't want to buy talon grips, I just throw those on there. I usually do it uh, between when I buy the talon grips on eBay and when they get here, but I forgot to buy them. These work great, so I just left them on there. The sights could be better. Uh, I mentioned that in the uh, in the uh, first impressions video. They're not they're not bad by any means. They're not like Glock sights or anything terrible like that. They're the three dot sights. The only thing I would say that I would improve with them, if you can see that right there, is that they have a little air in them, and that's great for a combat style pistol. These are combat style sights, so you can get a faster sight picture. However, with this pistol, I said such extreme accuracy that I'd really like a tighter sight picture so I can really stretch this thing out. I do wish it had the uh, grip panels of the VP9. That is the only thing that I think the VP9 got right over the PPQ, but I can still deal with this. As I said, the ergonomics are great. Uh, it's got a relatively low, low bore axis, which is nice. I know I talked about that before. A lot of people talk about that in reference to recoil, but the lower the bore axis you have, the actual lower uh, the uh, silhouette of the pistol so it's a little easier to carry. The longer the grip of a pistol, that was my biggest complaint about the three, SIG 320, uh, the more that's sticking out, the harder it is to conceal under a t-shirt. So lower the bore axis, shorter the grip, easier to conceal. It has these front side cocky, or front slide cocking serrations that I really like, as you can see there. Uh, does that do a lot for functionality? No, not really, but it makes the pistol look really sharp. And for me, you know, with guns that are so close together, like the uh, Glock M&P, PPQ, in functionality, I really think looks can set a gun apart and make it sell more. Uh, mag changes are great. I had no issue at all. Uh, they, again, steel mags. I think they're Metgar mags. They have a uh, slicked up coating to them, and uh, they insert extremely well, really positively. They eject really well as well. Uh, nothing like Glock mags are not going to get stuck in there. Also, they do have a little ledge, so if you do get a double feed or something like that, you can rip those guys out. So it works just perfect for me. Uh, the pick rail sucks. Uh, we had an issue with the X300, the uh, Surefire. When you uh, put it on there, it points down. If you want to get a look at that, check out my Surefire XC1 problems and fails video. Uh, this pistol is kind of the star of it. When you put it on there, it's got a weird mounting system and it kind of points down. That's a big con of this pistol in my opinion because I think that's probably the best and most comfortable uh, light for pistols on the market. Uh, all, however, the uh, things like the trusty Surefire X300 Ultra that I have here, which is my second favorite light, fits on it just fine. So not a total loss there, but I think it could use a little improvement. I think that's more of a problem with the XC1 than it is with the PPQ, however. As I said before, the trigger is fantastic. I can't say that enough. In every PPQ review, you will see how fantastic the trigger is, and they are not lying. Uh, it's the best trigger uh, on the market for polymer uh, guns. 
I can't think of a better one. I can think of some that are close. Sig 320 is relatively close. Uh, Canik's all right, but not near as good as this. The VP9 is very close as well. Uh, the VP9 and PBQ trigger are very similar. I've heard reports that the new CZP10 will have a better trigger, but uh, that's yet to be seen. I don't believe things till I shoot them in the backyard. Uh, the trigger guard is nice and big. That way uh, you can use it with gloved hands, which is really nice. A lot of times, especially with Glocks, if you have a glove on your hand, you stick your finger in there, you can accidentally cause a discharge. Uh, with the PPQ, not only is the trigger guard nice and big, but it's angled just a hair there and it's undercut, so you can still get that nice high grip, as you see there, and still have a big enough trigger guard to fit your finger in. I really like that about this pistol also. Uh, back to the trigger real quick, I forgot to tell you that mine broke right around 4.10 ounces. Uh, that is really good already, but if you can see me run it here, uh, you got a little bit of take up, just enough there. And I don't think take up such a bad thing because you're kind of prepping the trigger to fire, especially if you're in a self-defense scenario, you're holding the gun on somebody, you want to have a little, a little bit of room there for error. So it comes to it, and then it's got probably the best break in the business. As I said, as far as polymer pistols go, 1911s are going to be better. But you see there, it just breaks like glass. Nice, smooth, four-pound trigger pull. Uh, the takedown is very, very glockish. You can see there, pull the trigger to the rear, pull it back just a hair. And it just comes off just like that, just like a glock. Relatively easy if I can do it in this awkward scenario, sitting at the table, you can too. I have not cleaned this pistol since I have bought it, and I've owned it for, oh man, four months now, almost, and I've shot probably close to a thousand rounds. A lot of it wasn't even filmed. I actually brought this pistol out and did an impromptu shootout with a bunch of my friends, where we we pounded out at least 200 rounds that day, and the reason why I brought this out was to just show off the accuracy. It was really, really impressive. I can show you some of the POV shooting as well. It's no slouch in the speed department either. Uh, some of the problems I had was, again, it was snappy. Uh, aftermarket's kind of an issue. You won't find as many holster systems and sights and such. Uh, mainly, I wanted the Ameriglow uh, Spartans on this, but they don't make them for the PPQ. I'm not sure if they make Trigicon HDs or not, uh, but if not, I'm sure Dawson Precision makes some fiber optic for it, and that's good enough. Uh, the pick rail was an issue. Uh, the slide... Uh, I forgot to mention that slide is just a hair tall. Even though it's got a low bore axis just like the Glocks, the slide is just a little bit taller. Now that's not really an issue with recoil management, but it is kind of an issue with uh, some people if they are used to, like let's say the Glock and M&P size of slide, they come up and their aiming point when they pull up on target, the sights are just sitting a little bit higher than that. Uh, other than getting used to it, other than it being a training error, that is not really a con at all. All in all, I know this is personal preference. Uh, other than it being kind of an odd little alternative and not having quite the track record in the United States at least with like the M&P and the Glock, uh, this to me might be the best Palmer pistol on the market right now. Uh, CZP10 might beat it. Uh, for my personal preferences, I would prefer maybe something like a CZP07. I really like uh, double action. But again, wow, this thing really impressed me. Uh, like I said before, on paper at least, it might be the best polymer pistol on the market. If you're looking to uh, get something like this or if you've been thinking about buying this, my recommendation, go ahead. It gets a solid 10 out of 10 from me. Uh, if you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. Check you later. Hold on. Yep. You know what I forgot? Your protection? Yep. Me too. <laughs>